You know, I was reading an article, I think it's in the National Review of all places, not my favorite publication, about, um, well, it was, it was funny because it was echoing an article that Ayn Rand wrote. It didn't give a credit for it, but it was echoing an article that Ayn Rand wrote. Ayn Rand wrote um, a famous essay, I think one of her most powerful, one of her best essays, uh, in 1969, I think. Um, you know, Apollo versus Dionysus. Apollo representing, in a sense, you could view Apollo representing Aristotle and Dionysus, in a sense, representing Plato. Apollo representing logic and individualism. And Dionysus representing emotionalism and collectivism. And it's interesting that this image of Dionysus goes through Rome and goes through the, the Middle Ages. And, uh, and then you've got, you've got, uh, you've got uh, Apollo is clearly being Aristotelian. And she writes in 1969 about uh, the Dionysians on the left, uh, the new left, the hippies. She talks about Woodstock as, as symbolizes Dionysus, emotionalism, uh, uh, and, and Apollo, the Apollo program, Apollo getting to the moon as representing Apollo, right? The Apollonian view. And that those are the two choices we have in the world. Do we go on the side of the Dionysians and what consequences that leads to? And do, or do we go on the side of the Apollonians and on the side of science and logic and individualism and what consequences that leads to? And it's a brilliant essay, brilliant essay analyzing what's going on in the, in the 1960s in the United States. And there's a, there's a uh, article in the National Review about the Dionysians of the right today, about how the right has become Dionysian. The right has become, the, I mean, the way they interpret it, the right in the 1960s was about reason and logic. I mean, it wasn't really, but it was more so. It was about freedom and capitalism and individualism, and it was, and today, the right is completely emotionalist. The right is devoid of connection to reality. The right is anti-science and anti-technology. The right is anti-individualism. And this is the National Review writing about the new Dionysian right. And in that sense, it really appears that Plato now is taking over. He's taking over. He already has the left, and now he's clearly taking over the right. And that those of us who stand for Aristotle, stand for reason, stand for the Enlightenment, and I've talked a lot about the Enlightenment in the last few months, the last few years. Those who stand for the Enlightenment, we have no political home. And we're becoming a smaller and smaller minority across the board. Across the board. But, you know, the funny thing is that this Dionysian element within the right was identified by Ayn Rand. It's inevitable, given their religiosity. If you look at evangelical religion, what is it but emotion above reason? If you look at the whole Trump movement and Trump, you know, the Trump The people who are, who, who, who are willing to justify anything that he does, it's driven by emotion. It's not driven by reason, by logic, by explanation. By... We've got emotion, mysticism on left and right. And the place for reason, the place for logic, the place for Aristotle is shrinking. The place for the Enlightenment is shrinking. And if you look at... If you look at a place like Israel, that ultimately that will determine whether Israel survives or not. You know, is, does it go further along the path of emotionalism, of selling out, of compromise, of control, of authoritarianism, or does it somehow find those enlightenment values and, and, and embrace its success in technology
And uh, Scott, Scott says enough with both sides side stuff. stuff. Stop, Stop listening, listening. <laughs> because that's, that's what, what you're, you're going to get, get from the Iran Brook Show. show. You're, you're going to get both sides side stuff. <laughs> I see it. You don't. You don't have to listen. <laughs> you don't have to be here. Right? But if you're here, that's what you're going to get. Um, it, it, it's so obvious to me, and it's so clear to me. And listening to the Cave in the Light, Plato's influence on the right, particularly right now, is so clear and so obvious. And the disappearing, the disappearance of the Enlightenment values, the disappearance of the Founding Fathers, the fact that the new right is not the Founding Fathers' side, not on the Founding Fathers' side, has no conception of what the Founding Fathers stood for and what they represented, what their ideas were, and what they fought for. That's the reality. That's why things are so bad. That's what we're fighting against. An idea that all we're doing is fighting the left is just nuts. It's just not true. I mean, the left might be the biggest short-term threat, but long-term, it's not. Now, of course, Plato dominates the left. Dominates. But you see, this is where the element of Aristotle, this is what's interesting about that, even then. And this is where I've always said, I don't think the left is sustainable. Reality always fights back. Most people are not interested. So most people are not interested in this mystical nonsense of critical race theory or just anarchy or, or um, uh, you know, uh, uh, just mayhem and destruction and uh, reparations and guilt and all this stuff. People, they just don't buy it. And there's a, there's a good example now, you know, in, um, in Portland. I don't know if you're following the situation in Portland. But basically, the, the riots and them, the riots have basically stopped in Portland. It got boring. And most people didn't want it, didn't support it, weren't interested. They stayed silent because they didn't feel like they had any grounds. The, 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 the left, the, the, the nuts had them all high ground. But at some point, the police got a little tougher. People are being prosecuted now. And, you know, these, these nuts went around Portland smashing windows, destroying businesses for weeks, months. And at some point, it didn't go anywhere. It didn't achieve anything. And they just stopped. They're gone. I mean, I, I read this article, actually quite a good article, about this woman who is now, um, business owners are suing the city of Portland for not protecting their property. I think it's great. They're suing them for a lot of money. They say police did nothing to prevent the looting, nothing to prevent the destruction. All the business that they've lost, they're blaming on the police and they're blaming on the city for not protecting them, which is absolutely right. You know, maybe 150 thugs managed to destroy the, you know, to shut down the city and the police did nothing, nothing. So there's actually a real backlash in Portland. The city is, I mean, I know some of you live there. The city seems to be opening up again. Businesses are opening up. There's this lawsuit against the city. And, you know, the nutcases, what are they going to achieve? What are they going to achieve? Can't go anyway. It can't succeed. It can't achieve anything. It's stuck in a, another world. It's stuck in Rousseau. But Rousseau is a dead end. Plato is a dead end. Socialism is a dead end. CRT is a dead end. The left is a dead end. Now, it's a dead end that will want a lot of destruction on the way to being that dead end. And it has. Look at Portland. But they are truly nuts, destructive. Nihilists have no interest in reality, but the rest of the people do. 
Hey, best friend Hank, thanks. Really appreciate the support. Thank you. It's very generous. Scott asks the same question every single time, and it's like there's a barrier, maybe maybe it's a platonic barrier, that prevents him from act. Well, he doesn't want to understand what I say, or he doesn't agree, which is fine. But this is Scott's question. Portland is an example of left-wing craziness. Why don't we see more right-wing craziness in places like Oklahoma City if the right is the threat? Because the right's craziness is not going to manifest itself in burning down buildings, because burning down buildings doesn't get you political success. That's, the, the right's craziness is manifest in they stole the vote. The right's craziness expresses itself in voting for Trump. The right's craziness will manifest itself ultimately in whoever, Josh Hawley or whoever it turns out to be the guy who takes over in, in some kind of authoritarian government that doesn't have to burn down the streets of Portland because it controls the streets of Portland. I, I'm not worried about the hooligans. The hooligans can be dealt with. Hooligans can be managed. I mean, if the, if the, if the authorities in Portland cared, they would have shut down those riots in days, minutes, hours. Hooligans are easy to deal with. It's the intellectuals. It's the political movements. It's the philosophical movements that are difficult to deal with. No, you gave the example of Portland. In Portland, they are hooligans. The left is not just hooligans, but mostly the radical left are hooligans. They're nihilists. They want to smash stuff. They don't want to build anything. And you can't win the hearts and minds of people. You can't win long term with nihilism. You can win with idealism. And where, who has greater ideals? I think it's the right, not the left. Yeah, they attack the courthouse, the nihilists. They're going to destroy anything in their way, particularly, particularly uh, places of, that represent authority. Of course they're going to attack the courthouse and the police stations and anything that represents authority and businesses because they hate capitalism, they hate freedom, they hate, they hate making money. But that's not a governing ideology. That's, that's destructive. It big blow up, lots of burning, lots of noise, lots of destruction, maybe a lot of deaths. But at the end of the day, that's not what wins. It's not what wins. You've got to find an integrating, winning ideology. And again, I fear that that comes from a platonic right, from mystical nationalist, collectivist, anti-capitalist right. And I can see that right being created, particularly among Catholic intellectuals in the United States and among politicians like Josh Hawley and you know, Cotton and some others. Right? And to begin with, I wonder if I can ask you to capsulize, I know this is difficult, can I ask you to capsulize your philosophy? What uh, is Randism? Uh, First of all, I do not call it Randism, and I don't like that name. All I right. call it Objectivism. All right. Meaning a philosophy based on objective reality. Now, let me explain it as briefly as I can. First, my philosophy is based on the concept that reality exists as an objective absolute. That man's mind, reason, is his means of perceiving it and that man needs a rational morality. I am primarily the creator of a new code of morality which has so far been believed impossible, namely a morality not based on faith. On or faith. Not on faith, not on arbitrary whim, not on emotion, not on arbitrary edict, mystical or social, but on reason, a morality which can be proved by means of logic which can be demonstrated to be true and necessary. All right, all right. Now, may I define what my morality is? All right. Because this is merely an introduction. My morality is based on man's life as a standard of value. And since man's mind is his basic means of survival, I hold that if man wants to live on earth, 
and to live as a human being, he has to hold reason as an absolute, by which I mean that he has to hold reason as his only guide to action and that he must live by the independent judgment of his own mind, that his highest moral purpose is the achievement of his own happiness and that he must not force other people nor accept their right to force him, that each man must live as an end in himself and follow his own rational self-interest. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if you... Even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified. So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.